So I bought a brand new high yield dividend stock. And when I say high yield, I mean yielding just less than 10%. And if you were to dig into my dividend stock spreadsheet for March, you would find that this dividend stock has a payout ratio of 165%. So is there more going on here than meets the eye or is Average Joe here just betraying all of his dividend metrics? <laughs> All right, we're looking at the March 2022 dividend stock spreadsheet, which is available in the Patreon community and the Discord community if you guys are interested. Link in the description below. We are looking at a dividend stock here in the energy sector of the economy. This is a dividend stock that has been paying dividends consecutively every single year and increasing that dividend every year for 10 years now, which makes it a dividend contender. Currently priced at $40.67 a share. The one-year growth rate is a little bit lower at just under 4%, but the three-year growth rate of the dividend, 7%, and the five-year growth rate, 8.4%. Now, if we focus in here on the dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow, that is one important distinction I wanna make here. I talk about dividend stocks primarily when, when we talk about dividend safety with respect to dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow, whereas most people talk about net income. The difference in the equation here is dividends divided by net income versus dividends divided by free cash flow. And I talk extensively about why I feel free cash flow is a better measure because dividends are paid with cash and not net income and there are lots of accounting tricks that could go into manipulating those figures to make things look safer than they actually are. So we talk primarily about dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow. Why on earth would I buy a dividend stock that has a payout ratio based on free cash flow of 165%. Okay, so we're talking about Delic Logistics Partners LP in the energy sector of the economy. This is known as a master limited partnership. Now, when you think master limited partnership, the big thing you need to take away here is that it means that at the end of the year, it pays you a schedule K-1 instead of a form 1099 DIV, which you get for most dividend stocks. But the big thing I wanna focus on here is it's in the energy sector and the types of fundamentals that go on with an energy stock versus other types of companies is a little bit different here because there's so much capital expenditure that occurs every year, meaning they have to maintain and potentially even grow a lot of their equipment and assets that they use to deliver products. And when we're talking about energy, we're talking about pipelines and drilling and things like that. So when we talk about dividend safety, we wanna talk about a different term here we're gonna introduce, which is distributable cash flow or DCF. It's a little bit different, than free cash flow. And I wanna show you the little bit of difference here that, that goes into this equation. I've got a little graphic here for you. We're looking at free cash flow versus distributable cash flow. And we're starting with cash flow from operations and I'll show you on the annual report for Delic Logistics where you can find this information yourself and I will link to it in the description. So we both start with cash flow from operations. Now from there, we subtract for free cash flow, we subtract out maintenance capital expenditures and growth capital expenditures. When I say capital expenditure, I'm talking about money spent by the company to maintain their equipment. That could be pipelines, it could be facilities for drilling oil or for transporting oil, whatever it could be. It's, it's maintaining the capital infrastructure, those assets in order to continue making money. So with free cash flow, we talk about both maintenance capital expenditures, maintaining those assets, as well as growth capital expenditures, which is, as it says here, capital used to build infrastructure to expand the business. So when you take cash flow from operations and you subtract out both maintenance and growth capital expenditures, you are left with free cash flow. Now, distributable cash flow, a little bit different here. We're taking cash flow from operations and subtracting out maintenance capital expenditures, just like over here, but we're also adding in, instead of growth capital expenditures, we're talking about incentive distribution rights payments. Now, most master limited partnerships have a general partner and they have a right to some of the distributions or the dividends as well. So we subtract out both maintenance capital expenditures and incentive distribution rights payments, like it says here, any distributions that are required to be paid out to their general partner and you're left with DCF. So the big difference here is instead of growth, we're talking about incentive distribution rights. Now, I think that this is critical here because if you think about a master limited partnership, they are required by law in order to have preferential tax treatment, they're required by law to pay out 90% of their taxable income every single year to, to their investors. So every year they need to make a decision on whether they have enough capital available to grow the infrastructure or if they just need to pay out money to investors. So if they have extra cash flow, then they can make that decision. But at the end of the day, it's still a growth opportunity. It's not something they have to do like they do with maintaining their capital expenditure. 
So this is why distributable cash flow is a better measure when we talk about energy stocks, specifically master limited partnerships, than regular dividend stocks we look at. So then the big question becomes, how do I find distributable cash flow? Well, the easy answer is you can find it on my spreadsheet now. I'm gonna make sure that all of our limited partnerships on the spreadsheet have this information updated so that you guys can make informed decisions on the dividend stocks that you buy into. But let's say you wanna do it yourself. You wanna go out and find this information yourself. The best document you can go to is the Form 10K, which is filed by the company with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC. This is what the Form 10K looks like. From here, what you can usually do is just do a search. So sometimes different wor they word it differently in different reports, but let's just start with distributable cash flow. Two matches, one, actually 12 matches. Distributable cash flow, or the reconciliation of net cash from operating activities. In the same way, we start with net cash, and we end up with distributable cash flow. You can see here, pretty stable. $207 million in 2020, $215 million in 2021. How much did they pay out in dividends? So here are the cash distributions. Let's take a look here at 2021. Total cash distributions right here. We've got 42, 384, plus 41, 286, plus 40, 846, and 39, 968. Total here is 164, $0.484 million, we'll take that number, we will divide it by the total um, distributable cash flow available, 215,781, which means that our actual payout ratio based on distributable cash flow is only 76.22%, much less than what we were seeing on the spreadsheet here, right here, we were looking at 165%, big difference. So when I'm talking about master limited partnerships, as long as that payout ratio, dividends paid or distributions paid divided by distributable cash flow, is less than 100%, meaning that they are covering fully that distribution, I'm happy. Because if I'm owning a master limited partnership, I have a much higher dividend yield. When I talk more about quality dividend stocks, and I'm looking at yields of three, four, five percent I'm much more concerned about having a lot of room to grow that dividend, so I wanna see that payout ratio much lower, 20, 30, 40, 50%, as opposed to close to 100%. And another reason I like Delic Logistics here is, you know, a lot of times we have concerns, when, we, when I talk about QILD or other types of covered call ETFs, we're concerned about the erosion of the price per share. But if we look at uh, Delic Logistics here, let's go back to a one year look back to see what the price looks like. We are positive, we're not losing value. We were at, what is this, maybe around $35 a share, we're now at 41. And if we go back, let's say two or maybe even five years here, we can see that except for that huge drop from COVID, we were priced at right around uh, $31 a share, now we're at 41. As long as I'm getting a yield of nine, 10, 11%, and I am still gaining in price per share, even if it's just a little bit, I am a happy dividend investor. And you can see right here, here is the high yield dividend account, and here is Delic Logistics in the, in the portfolio. Right now I've only got uh, $1,500 of my money invested in this company, but I'm going to increase that percentage so I can get it up to more like seven to 10% of the account. If you like this video, guys, check out this one right over here. It's gonna be a great next step for you to continue your educational journey when it comes to dividend stocks. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day, and please continue to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.